This is Oscar, and he wears shoes, but not shoes like our shoes. He wears horseshoes, those U-shaped metal objects that people say bring good luck. And today is Oscar's lucky day. He's going to get his shoes replaced. He doesn't go to the shoe store to get new shoes. No, a farrier, the person who puts horses on shoes, comes out to the farm with a truck loaded with horseshoes and tools to care for horses' hooves or feet, as we know them. I guess you could call them the horse version of a human podiatrist and shoe salesman. People have been putting hoof coverings on horses for over a thousand years for a variety of reasons. Some horses wear shoes to protect their hooves from wear and tear, some to give them added traction, some to correct lameness issues and or to recover from injuries. However, many horses are able to go barefoot and don't need shoes. Their hooves grow just like our toenails and need trimming about every six weeks. This process doesn't hurt the horse in the least, and it is done by the farrier. And today's farrier is Tim Gilbert, who will be giving Oscar his replacement shoes. Let's start by watching the process where he begins by digging the dirt out of his hooves using a hoof knife or hoof pick to prepare them for his new shoes. He'll then use a clinch cutter to remove the sharp edges of the nails and cut them off so that the nails will slide easily out from his hooves. Continuing to work his way around, horseshoes typically have eight nails in them and eight nail holes. And once the nails are loosened, he'll begin to pull them out removing each nail, and when the final nail comes off, the shoe will be loose and ready to be removed. And there the shoe is removed. Knock out that last nail that's stuck in, and Barrier Tim will prepare to trim his hooves. He begins by using a hoof knife to remove the dead sole, an overgrown sole in the bottom of the horse's hoof. And then he'll use the knife to trim up the frog. The frog is the V-shaped part that you can see towards the top edge of the hoof. And it's soft and cushiony and acts as a shock absorber for the horse. And it trims down, as you can see, Oscar's not phased in the least. This doesn't hurt him one bit. Next, he'll remove the edges, just like we would clip our toenails. He's trimming the edges off of Oscar's hooves, where they've grown. And he'll work his way all the way around until all those long edges have been removed. Then he'll use the hoof knife again to pare that bottom or the sole down on his hoof and then use a rasp to smooth things out. The rasp has a rough side and a smoother side to remove all the rough edges and smooth everything out. He'll make final adjustments with that hoof knife again to be sure to pare everything down so that it's level and ready for Oscar's shoes to be replaced. Pick up the old shoe, check it to see if it is still level and fitting his hooves now that they've been trimmed down. And then he'll move on to the anvil using a hammer to be sure that the shoe has been leveled out. Sometimes as shoes are removed or the horse wears them, they may shift a bit. 
and then he will take that shoe. He's getting his shoes replaced this time. Sometimes horses wear their shoes down and need new shoes, and sometimes they can be replaced. And today, Oscar's getting a replacement pair. So he'll put nails in. Again, there are usually eight holes to a horseshoe, and the farrier will typically use all eight holes. Bang the nails through the hoof. This does not hurt the horse at all. We'll tap the nails in, and they will come out on the outer edge, and he'll use the hammer to bend them down. Working his way around each one until all eight nail holes have been filled and the nails are all through the hoof and bent over. Then he'll use a clinch block, which is a metal block, to secure those nails down tight. And on the top, use clinchers to be sure that the edges are rolled over tightly to hold the shoe onto the horse's hoof. Work his way around, tightening all the clinches, and then use a rasp again to smooth everything out and make sure there are no rough edges. Again, none of this hurts the horse. It's no different than you trimming your fingernails. You can see by how quietly Oscar's standing, he doesn't mind a bit. Being a farrier is a very physically demanding job that can be done by both men and women. It is a job that is hot in the summer and cold in the winter. Although in the winter, if the farrier is doing hot shoeing, like we see here with these red hot shoes, that can warm things up a bit. When doing hot shoeing, the farrier heats the shoe, whether pre-made or handmade, in a forge, usually gas-powered, to a very high temperature that causes it to glow orange like that. It makes the metal softer so that the farrier can use a hammer to hammer it into shape to fit the horse perfectly and then take that hot shoe over, press it against the bottom of the horse's hoof where we see the smoke coming off of it to ensure the perfect fit. This does not hurt the horse at all. It's no different than touching the dead end of your fingernail. You have no feeling there. However, it ensures a tight, accurate fit against the horse's hoof so that it will create a tight seal and the farrier can go back if need be, hammer, put it back in the forge, hammer it out to the perfect shape. Once the shoe is perfectly prepared, they'll dunk it in a bucket of water like we see back here to cool it off and place it against the horse's hoof. The shoes are nailed to through the bottom of the sole, out through the wall, and here we can see the other parts of the hoof. The sole is the flat bottom part where we saw the farrier use a hoof knife to pare away. The frog is the V-shaped part that acts as a shock absorber and helps to circulate blood through the horse's foot and leg. And here are some of the tools that the farrier will use to accomplish that. This is the anvil and hammers used to shape the horseshoes. Here's a hoof stand for putting the horse's hoof on when they're doing the final rasping, as well as some tools that have been set to, attached by magnets. Barriers always have a toolbox that they use. This one is on wheels so that it can maneuver around the horse as the farrier moves from leg to leg. Here's a close-up view. You can see the, ver the rasp and various tools. We'll take a closer look at the tools in the toolbox. This is a clinch cutter used to cut the clinches to loosen the shoe as well as to tighten. This is a pair of nail pullers used to pull those nails out of the shoe to remove them. On the left we see the clincher that is used to tighten those clinches down, the nails down as they come through the outside edge of the hoof. And on the right is nippers used to trip off that dead part of the hoof. This is a clinch block used to press against to create those tight clinches to clinch the nails down to the hoof. And let's watch it 
Oscar get his other back foot done. Speed it up a bit so that we can watch the process go a little faster. Here he's having his shoe loosened. And removed and cleaned out. Then the bottom of the sole is pared down. The hoof knife is used on the frog also. And now nippers. And remove that outer edge of the wall of the hoof. Rasp to smooth things out and level them up. And checking the fit with the shoes again. These are his old shoes, which will be replaced. And now the shoe is being nailed on. And the nails are bent out on the back side. The shoe is put up on the hoof stand and rasped off. For a final nice, neat, smooth edge to his hoof. And here we see his front feet being done. Again, the hoof knife, removing excess sole and frog. Another hoof knife. And now the nippers are being used to remove the excess edge of his hoof. Horses' hooves can grow about a half an inch in that six to eight week period. And they will wear some of that down, depending on the surface that they're on and the use that they are used for. Those pieces that are coming off of there are wonderful dog treats. Farms that have horse dogs around always have to be sure the dogs are out of range so they don't get under the farrier's feet because the dogs sure do like those hoof cookies. Now this hoof is up on the stand, filing off those sharp edges. All up. One more hoof to go. This one's getting rasped down. It checks for being sure that it's level and even and smooth. There's some more rasping. And finally puts that hoof up on the hoof stand to round off those edges and ensure that everything is smooth and even. It makes it look easy, but it's a lot of hard work. And here we have Juno, who's going to get a new pair of front shoes. And there's his old shoe coming off. Juno is just hanging out, as you can see. These horses are not phased by having this done. And he's getting shoes put on his front feet. The farrier has a special magnet in the side of his chaps that he's wearing to hold those nails, so they're always within reach. The chaps help to protect his legs as he works, as do those sturdy boots his feet. There are the nails going in and being bent over on the bottom. And finally his hoof is up on the stand. The clinches are tightened down and the Hoof is rasped to smooth out all of the rough edges, and he's finished. 
And just what happens to all those shoes when the horses have worn them out, you might ask? Well, sometimes in their free time, farriers turn those used horseshoes into art. They use their imaginations and come up with all sorts of unique creations, including simple things like pumpkins, to elaborate things like these very ornate horses, which required many, many horseshoes and hours of work. So whether large or small, every horse or pony needs their hooves trimmed. And here we can see a Shetland pony having its hooves trimmed. It's the same process. Nippers to remove the outer edges. And a rasp to smooth away all the rough edges and ensure that everything is level and even. It's just much harder when they're this small on the farrier to be bent over. So at the end of a long day, we can see farrier Tim looks a bit stooped over from all that hard work. He makes it look easy, but it's very hard and tiring. So here's Oscar. He's got his new shoes. You've seen the whole process from start to finish with his feet being trimmed and his shoes being replaced. And now you know when you see a lucky horseshoe, you know the rest of the story behind those horseshoes.